Welcome to True Mysteries. Today we're telling a story from 1990 of a group of experienced cave divers that dove into the Sakaktun cave system only to have half of the divers become lost. They searched for a way out while one of the other divers dove back into the cave to try and save them. This is the story of the Sakaktun Cenote tragedy. The Sac Actun cave system is situated along the Caribbean coast of Mexico. In 2018, it was found to be connected to the Dos Hoyos system, making it the longest known underwater cave system. This is a very popular and beautiful cave system that tourists travel long distances to visit. The most popular part of this cave system is Gran Cenote. Gran Cenote is a popular tourist destination where many people swim, snorkel, and dive. In 1990, tragedy befell eight divers near Gran Cenote. On October 17, 1990, a group of eight divers prepared to enter just north of Tulum, Mexico. Their plan was to enter Cenote Hotul and swim to Gran Cenote, where they would surface and organize for a return trip. Each way would take about 20 minutes, then they would recalculate their air for a third dive to a different cenote connected by the Sac Actun system. The eight divers were all cave certified and had plenty of experience. In planning, the divers decided to separate into two groups of four. The first group would lead and the second group would follow closely behind. The first group would also be led by the most experienced diver, James. This was a well-organized and generally simple dive except for one obstacle. At about 280 feet upstream from Cenote Hotul, the divers would cross a 70-foot gap in the permanent line. The lead divers, including James, would install a temporary line across the gap, connecting the line leading from Cenote Hotul to the line leading to Grand Cenote. A pink direction line marker would be placed at the Hotul side of the line. The remaining divers would then traverse the gap. On their return trip, the final members of the second group would reel in the temporary line. Once the divers had all agreed that they understood the plan and had reviewed their map of the cave system, their journey began. The dive to Grand Cenote was fairly uneventful. They had placed the temporary line and made it to Grand Cenote in 24 minutes. They strung a line from the entrance of the cave system to the surface at Grand Cenote so they could easily return to the entrance to the cave. At Grand Cenote, they surfaced, organized, and reviewed the plan for the return trip. The divers had started with 3,000 PSI in their double 80s and now had 2,300 to 2,400 PSI. They spent 15 minutes on the surface and reviewed the cave layout and the plan three times. Once everyone agreed, they began their return trip. Right away, the group had two slight delays. The group investigated a crocodile skeleton, and a diver in the first group lost their mask. The mask was quickly retrieved by a diver in the second group and returned to its owner. The two groups continued through the cave system, with the second group following the first with a small gap between. The first group reached the temporary line, and the lead diver of the first group, James, detached the reel of the temporary line. He held the reel while the three other divers traversed the gap. The three divers from group one arrived at the Hotul side and waited at the pink marker. The second team arrived at the Grand Cenote side of the temporary line, and then James handed the reel to the last member of the second team. James then followed the temporary line across the gap to the other three members of the first group that were waiting. The first group then made a hard left turn to head back to Cenote Hotul. James looked back to see two members of the second team headed his way and a third member already having completed the trek across the gap. The first group continued on to Cenote Hotul. When they arrived, James looked back and didn't see any lights from the second team following. However, they weren't far back and it was a simple swim, so he believed that the line in the reel must be jammed and they were simply working it out, as this was prone to happen. The first group recalculated their air for thirds and proceeded to the third cenote. When they arrived, James couldn't get it out of his head that something more happened to group two. 
He told the other three members of Group 1 to stay, and he went back to look for Group 2. James returned to Cenote Hotul, expecting to find Group 2, but no one was there. He swam back to the gap and found that the temporary line that he had detached and handed to the last person in Group 2 was now reattached. He thought that if the line was reattached, Group 2 must have gone back to Grand Cenote for some reason. So he went back to Grand Cenote. Group 2 was not there. James then swam from Grand Cenote to Cenote Hotul and on to the third Cenote, where the other three members of Group 1 awaited. There was no sign of Group 2 anywhere along the way. Group 1 swam back to Cenote Hotul and James took one final dive to try and find Group 2. On the way to the gap, James saw three lights. James came up to two members of Group 2 sharing air and signaling that the other two members were behind them and out of air. This is what happened to Group 2. After James and the other members of Group 1 looked back and saw Group 2 traversing the temporary line across the gap, three members of Group 2 reached the Hotul side of the gap while the final diver reeled in the line. As James suspected, the reel jammed and the line was stuck. The divers ran the line back to the Grand Cenote side and reattached it, then proceeded to cross back to the Hotul side where the pink marker was. Once they had regrouped at the marker, the second team lead took a sharp right, heading down a passage in the opposite direction of Hotul. He was going deeper into the cave system. During the commotion of the jammed reel and resetting the temporary line, the divers had become disoriented and gone the wrong direction. They were now swimming directly away from Cenote Hotul. They swam for a while, the second team lead checked the air levels, then continued on. The second team lead looked worried and asked the other divers why they hadn't seen Group 1 yet. They came to the conclusion that they had gone the wrong direction at the pink marker at the gap. They checked their air, 1500 PSI for one diver and 1000 for the other three. They were heading back, but they were all worried that they were cutting it too close. As they headed back down the line to the gap, they found a snapping gap line leading off of the main line. They thought that this could be a line leading to the third cenote, so they took it. Just 100 feet down the line, they found an arrow marker pointing back the direction that they had come. They turned around and headed back to the main line after wasting precious air. The four then continued down the main line heading for the gap when the two divers in the back sped up and swam past the two divers in the front. This left a trail of silt for the back divers as the front divers disappeared. Soon after, one of the two trail divers ran out of air. They began sharing air. Then one of the diver's fins came loose and popped off. They abandoned the fin as they had no time to deal with it, but this slowed their swim. Soon, they came upon the other two divers that had passed them. They were clearly out of air and struggling, but they saw a light ahead of them. The two divers sharing air swam toward the light to find James coming toward them. James signaled the way to Cenote Hotul, and the divers signaled that, that there was trouble behind them. The final two divers were out of air. James continued on to find a lifeless body stuck to the ceiling with his head in a small air pocket. He pulled off his regulator and purged air into the pocket, adding fresh air. He then reached up and felt in the air pocket. The diver was gasping for air. James then pushed his second stage regulator into the air pocket and the diver took it. After about a minute, the diver came down from the air pocket, replaced his face mask, and cleared it. James then took his hand and escorted him to Cenote Hotul, about 150 feet away. They arrived to find the rest of the members of Group 1 and the other two divers that had been sharing air. Now only one diver was not accounted for. James and another diver from Group 1 headed back into the cave system to find the last lost diver. They swam past the air pocket when they saw the last diver unconscious on the floor of the cave. They attempted to provide a regulator, but the diver did not respond. They towed the diver's lifeless body to the surface where they administered CPR. The diver did not regain consciousness and died. He died disoriented in a cave on his 54th cave dive. This was a very experienced diver that made a mistake. After the fact, 
Two of the divers claimed that they questioned whether they were going the right way, but didn't speak up because they weren't sure and expected the dive leader to know the correct route. After this tragedy, the rigging in this cave was immediately reconfigured. A permanent line was added across the gap and turning right to lead deeper into the cave system rather than left now requires the use of a temporary gap line. This arrangement is to ensure that there is a connection between the two cenotes and if you want to go deeper into the caves, then you have to add a jump line. This is True Mysteries. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.